uh, home. Okay, I press record. We're going to try this again. Take oh, number 77. We don't even know how many takes. Guys, we did a whole recorded... We keep making that bounce. We did a whole thing. Making what bounce? The webcam. I think it's hitting the desk. Um, we have no idea why that we can't get this to go today. This is our last and final effort. I hope I'm not just talking to the webcam. I hope I'm actually going to be talking to some people. We are not live, but but we're still going to try. Um, because none of the stuff that I have ready for today can be said on Monday because it will be past time. So, guys, this is the last final <laughs> effort. We just do a recorded um, video and upload it. This is a recorded, going to be a recorded video. So we've already done this. We're going to try to redo well, we're it. We're screen recording right now. <laughs> yeah, we're screen recording. So let's try it again, guys. Uno mas. We don't know what's happening, but I wanted to talk about this, about this Harvest Moon business, and that's what I keep trying to talk about. I don't know if it's God blocking me, or I don't know if it's just because it won't go out. Technology's failing me today, but... Today is Friday the 13th on a Harvest Moon Day. So, I wanted to talk about the biblical truths, what a Harvest Moon is, and why we don't worship the moon, the sun, the stars, and all those things. But, they're significant, and we are told to watch, this, watch for signs in the sky. So... We're not going to be as passionate because we've already given, I feel like we've already given all of our passion out trying to make this video. We're passionless. And as you can tell, it is not 6 a.m. It is actually 9 a.m. Central Time. Well, we're only three hours late. <laughs> He's got the food on for the funeral today. Mm -hmm. We are getting the food ready for the jail today. I've already made the school run. Came back. Um... Last attempt. Okay, here we go. A full moon will be visible in the sky this Friday, which is today. The first time one has occurred on Friday the 13th in nearly 20 years. The last time the two events coincided was on October 13th, um, 2000. And it will not happen again until August 13th, 2049. So there is a huge gap. If you do not see it today, you're not going to be able to see it again until 2049. If we're still here, the Lord may come before then. 20, 30 years from now? 20, it's a 20, while. 20, Peak years. viewing will be at 1233 a.m. So if you want to see it, either stay up or set your alarm on Saturday morning, but the moon will appear almost entirely full from when the sun goes down Friday evening. It's also this year's harvest moon, adding another spooky layer to the already <laughs> ominous date. What is a full harvest moon? The harvest moon is the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox or the beginning of the fall. This year, the autumnal equinox is on September 23rd. Harvest moons are different from other full moons due to the fact they rise at roughly the same time for several nights running. This weekend's moon will also appear full on Saturday night, bearing any unforeseen weather conditions. Why the nickname? It arose from farming as the autumnal equinox often coincided with one of the busiest times of the year for farmers. Crops often rose all at once in the late summer and early autumn, meaning they had to work late into the night around this time of year because they didn't have lights and the technology we have today, so they had to depend on God's light mm -hmm. so they could get that last crop of harvest in because that was their livelihood. They couldn't just run to the store like we do. They depended on their crops to sustain them. That was how they, sur they survived. And in times of primitive technology, the moon was infinitely more important. So, switching on over here to worship. Humans have a tendency to worship anything that seems greater than we are. And moon worship, or moon goddess worship, has been a historical problem. And we've already read about the pagan worship and the idols and all those things through our study. 
God warned us about this in Deuteronomy 419. When you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them. Some cultures have attributed divine qualities to the sun and moon and built altars to them and worshiped them. But the, mo the moon is a creation of God, just as the earth is, and not worthy of worship or praise. So, we are not supposed to worship the creation or Mother Earth or the sun, the moon, the stars. We are to worship the Creator alone. And many people throughout the ages, even today, still look to the moon and the sun for their force, their life force, their energy. They do rituals. Guys, God warns us not to do that. He is not pleased when we do that. When we turn our focus from the Creator to the creation, we are guilty of idolatry, and we study that in Romans. Um, an important spiritual truth we can learn from the full moon is that, as bright and beautiful as the full moon appears, it has no brilliance of its own. It relies entirely upon the sun for its light. Without the sun, the moon is merely a hunk of dark rock, and so are we without Jesus. We are nothing without the Lord. Likewise, we human beings have no light of our own. We merely, we, we are created in the image of God to reflect His brilliance and glory. When we are turned to face the majesty of Almighty God, when we surrender to Him and seek Him with all our hearts, we reflect His glory. We were created to be reflectors of His light in this world. When we shine in the glory of God, we are not to be worshipped, as the moon is not to be worshipped. We are to point people to Jesus by committing ourselves to reflect his light. So does the moon have any biblical significance? I believe it does. Um, I believe we are to uh, look to the moon and the stars for signs in the seasons that we're in and apply it to the word or apply the word to it. The moon is one of the great lights that God made on the fourth day of creation. This great, these great lights were to help mankind mark the passing of time and the rotation of the earth. Ancient cultures based their seasons and even celebrations upon the moon's phases. We've heard much lately about blood moons as a sign that Jesus' return is imminent. But does a full moon have any biblical significance? Full moons are mentioned in a few places in scripture, but not in ways that mark any particular significance. New moons mark the beginning of months in the lunar-based Hebrew calendar and also signified when the Israelites were to bring sacrifices to the Lord. Psalms 81.3 says, Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day. This alludes to the feast of celebration held when the moon is full. The prophet Joel foretold that the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Isaiah 30, 26 speaks of an unnaturally bright moon that will play a part when the day of the Lord, uh, when, the, when the day of the Lord comes. So, we do watch the moon, guys, but do not be worshiping the moon. Um, and also, today is a day when we really need to be in prayer. Um, you know, ask the Lord, what, you crazies. know, what can I pray about? Yeah, because there are crazies out there. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of superstitious people, a lot of witchcraft will be going on, and they are very loyal to these days when they feel like the moon's at its fullest or its brightest, the life force that they want to receive, astrology and all that stuff is witchcraft. So today, we want to be in spiritual warfare and pray because they're out there doing their thing. God's people need to rise up in this time. And a call to rise up is to be, be in prayer. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself because we, <laughs> we said this before, but we didn't. they didn't get recorded. So, Oops. guys, it's so hard, I know, to think that or to even want to do that. But we need to be loyal in our prayer time with the Lord because nothing can happen if we don't pray. And so we see darkness taking over this world when we are the light. So we need to, to take our part in this and to be praying. So I'm not going to elude on elaborate on a lot of that witchcraft stuff going on because um, I don't want to give it glory, but just know it does. People do still sacrifice. Uh, people do still do rituals. 
um, people still feel like that's where the life comes from. Okay, so just know that, and we know the true life comes from from the Lord. We worship the Creator, not the creation. Okay, so today's message is really short. Um, God, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us. That's what really this study was going to be about. I wanted to throw in that first little part because of the day that it is. So here we go, really fast. We've only got um, short paragraphs for 2 Corinthians chapter 7. It says, Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit, and let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. So, because we fear God, we're going to worship Him, right? We're not going to worship His creation. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor led anyone astray, nor taken advantage of anyone. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I say, I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. I have the highest confidence in you and I take great pride in you. You have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all our troubles. So Paul is saying this to the Corinthians. Um, he's trying to encourage them that he loves them. Even though that first letter he sent was hard and harsh, he is still proud. He is still proud of them. When we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. Remember we talked about yesterday, what was it, um, uh, right and left hands in battle. Uh, you're, you're defending with one and fighting with the other. I think it's defend with the left and fight with the right. That must, that's probably it. But God, who encourages those who are discouraged. So, in our times of trouble, in our times of sorrow, God encourages us. He does it in so many ways. He uses people. He uses His Word. He uses uh, music. He uses billboards. He uses everything. But God, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. His presence was a joy, but so was the news he brought of the encouragement he received from you when he told us how much you longed to see me and how sorry you are for what had happened and how loyal you are to me. I was filled with joy. Remember back in um, previous chapters where Paul had written a letter to them or written in his letter to them to be kind to Titus? I am not sorry that I sent that severe letter to you, though I was sorry at first, for I know it was painful to you for a little while. Now I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. So sometimes the truth is painful when we do it in love, or um, to those that are sinners, like they haven't been saved by grace yet, it's hard for them to hear. But when God's doing a work inside of them, they come to that place of repentance, and then that leads to their salvation. Um, it was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have, so you were not harmed by us in any way. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. We see a lot of people today walking around spiritually dead because they do not have the Holy Spirit, because they have not called upon the name of Jesus. They haven't received salvation. Just see what this godly sorrow produced in you. Such earnestness, such concern to clear yourselves, such indignation, such alarm, such longing to see me, such zeal, and such a readiness to punish wrong. You show that you have done everything necessary to make things right. My purpose then was not to write about who did wrong or who was wronged. I wrote to you so that in sight of God you could see for yourselves how loyal you are to us. We have been greatly encouraged by this. In addition to our own encouragement, we were especially de delighted to see how happy Titus was about the way all of you welcomed him and set his mind at ease. I had told him how proud I was of you, and you didn't disappoint me. I have always told you the truth, and now my boasting to Titus has proved true. Now he cares for you more than ever when he remembers the way all of you obeyed him and welcomed him with such fear and deep respect. I am very happy now because I have complete confidence in you. And that's the end. We did it. I hope we did it. We're about to see when we click when we click this uh, end. So. <laughs> 
guys. I feel weird just sitting over here with nothing to Nothing to do, of. no live stream, no communication. I need to take a shower. We need to cook. We need to get ready for the day. But I really, really, really wanted to get out about this moon and about us being prayerful today. Be vigilant. Be spiritually vil vigilant. Vigilant. Spiritually vigilant. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've done this multiple times. That's all the coffee <laughs> she's had. Yeah, we're still drinking coffee. I'm, I'm going to be out of a bowl. drinking <laughs> coffee all day. Um, that's, that's two, that's almost three cups in one cup. Well, Jonathan didn't want to go to school this morning, well, and I bribed him. I said, if you want to go to the lake with Grammy tomorrow, you're going to go to school. And he went to school. I gave him four quarters, and he went to school. Well, the, the money part. And then I, the I told him, I said, guess what happened? Guess what happened today? Guess what happened this morning? I said, but bri I bribed him. Up. Can I bribe him? Because mm -hmm. biblically, we're not supposed to do bribery. So, I don't know if that's a good thing. But he went to school. So, <clears throat> all right, guys. It works. We're going to end it right. We're going to get busy. Mm. So, I got to go check my meat. Thanks for sticking this day with, out with us. Um, Y'all are awesome. If you're watching this right now, you are awesome. And we'll see you Monday. <laughs> God bless.